Dear students of English uh, literature, we welcome you in our lecture for English words and lectures today. In this lecture, uh, we are working in the series of uh, figures of a speech or poetic devices. In previous lectures, uh, I have tried to define uh, what is a figure of a speech and what is the importance of figure of a speech. So, uh, today we will uh, begin with hyperbole. Uh, figure of a speech and directly and uh, we are not going to define the importance and the definition of figure of a speech or poetic device in previous lectures students you uh, came to know uh, various uh, figures of a speech and poetic devices today we'll study hyperbole and onomatopoeia uh, these two uh, poetic devices and to describe this is M. Rahman and you are attending our AC classes of English language. Please uh, to continue this series with us. Uh, please keep on watching our AC classes of English language and please subscribe our channel. And if you like uh, our lectures, don't forget to share and like. And uh, students, if you require any lecture, please uh, you must write in uh, the comment box. Uh, we will try to prepare the lectures concern to your requirement definitely. Now let's begin with hyperbole, figure of a speech. The pronunciation of this word H-Y-P-E-R-B-O-L-E is hyperbole. Uh, hyperbole basically is a, a figure of a speech in which uh, we uh, do not uh, talk a, in a usual manner. We uh, speak uh, on higher or a less level means we exaggerate the matter, we intensify or uh, we take the matter up to a very low level it is used as a great exaggeration uh, students uh, the meaning of exaggeration is very important to know uh, for this uh, poetic device or figure of a speech exaggeration means uh, exaggeration means uh, to make greater or less better or worse and uh, we don't uh, take anything on its normal level suppose if you want to uh, glorify a thing, we will take the thing up to such heights that it becomes uh, beyond imagination to believe. And if we try to make it so uh, patty, make it uh, so uh, uh, ma uh, making a thing of so low level that uh, nobody would like to see it. It means we change its scale, uh, either we take it up to the higher level or the lowest level. In the next uh, definition, we can understand all this, whatever I have already spoken. In hyperbole, a statement is made emphatic. Emphatic means uh, we pressurize, uh, we focus by overstatement, means by speaking more or less, but not usually or normally. Now, uh, I think the definition that you must learn should be based on noun because in the first definition it is used. Uh, and I think if you are writing any definition, uh, figure of a speech should be given as a name in the beginning so that uh, everybody can understand. In hyperbole, it means a second uh, definition is better in comparison to the first one. A statement is made emphatic by overstatement means whenever you find uh, overstatement in any sentence, then definitely you declare that there is hyperbole figure of a speech. Uh, what is overstatement? Suppose uh, somebody dies and uh, people weep. It's a very, uh, I think, usual sight and uh, we think it's a, a common sight. But if we, if somebody says when Gandhiji died, uh, the sky wept, uh, uh, floods of tears, oceans of tears, rivers of tears, it, it becomes uh, exaggerated matter. It becomes more than uh, the limit and it is beyond description or you can say it is uh, beyond imagination and somewhat it becomes false and whenever we cross is the limit there is hyperbole figure of a speech now students uh, in uh, some of the state boards uh, uh, we have a subjective question uh, to write the definition of a figure of a speech uh, of a figure of a speech and uh, we have to give two example then uh, to those students who are going to face such a question and who are in senior secondary and uh, now i would like to suggest them that the definition written in this green color is very important to learn because this definition is not only easy but also uh, has uh, such words uh, as help you in learning the meaning 
hyperbole is a figure of speech in which things or persons are represented or as greater or less things and persons both living and non living as greater or less better or worse than they actually are means we don't talk in a normal sense we don't talk on the actual level but we exaggerate the matter either up to greater level or a better level or uh, sorry less level better or worse uh, state or condition so when we uh, talk like this there is hyperbole figure of a speech or poetic device now let's see the examples uh, because in subjective uh, examination we have to write uh, two examples uh, with each definition and uh, in a cbse board and other boards uh, you have to find out the poetic devices uh, from the given extract or the stanza now you have come to know how you can find it out now let's see rivers of blood flowed in the battle rivers of blood this is exaggerated matter because uh, rivers of blood never flows in a battle it is beyond the limit whenever we cross the limit in our description on a higher level or on the lowest level so there is definitely hyperbole figure of a speech or you can say poetic device 10000 so at i at a glance this line is taken from uh, daffodils written by william wordsworth uh, the poet is describing daffodils that he observed 10000 in a sight in a glance and it is more than uh, expected uh, thing so it is exaggerated this is beyond the limit that's why uh, it seems not uh, true that's why here he is a uh, hyperbole figure of his speech or poetic device o hamlet thou hast cleft my heart in twain here uh, the speaker is addressing the village a very short village hamlet and uh, saying you have uh, cleaved my heart into two equal parts into two parts and it is very difficult uh, and it is quite impossible that a person could talk even after ha uh, having or keeping his heart into two pieces so it's a uh, beyond imagination it's a uh, beyond the truth that's why we can say there is hyperbole figure of a speech and other than this there is uh, apostrophe apostrophe is a figure of a speech or poetic device in which you address some non-living thing or abstract things or absent things and hamlet is not a living being that you are addressing here uh, so uh, because of addressing hamlet and there is a exclamatory mark so we can say uh, addressing is confirmed with this mark so there is apostrophe figure of a speech too means a poetic line can have more than one figures of speech or poetic devices now uh, we can say that this line contains uh, not only apostrophe but also uh, hyperbole figure of uh, figures of speech or poetic devices now let's see in the next example she shed oceans of tears oceans of tears okay somebody can weep and shed tears and uh, she and he uh, could get her, her or his hanky wet but uh, oceans of tears it is more than normal that's why here is um, hyperbole figure of his speech because the matter is exaggerated now let's see the seventh uh, uh, parts uh, the seventh figure of his speech or poetic device onomatopoeia uh, in this figure of his speech we see an onomatopoeia consists in using a word using a word similar to the sound using a word similar to a sound means we use uh, a word uh, uh, that represents a sound and that sound gives the meaning of the thing or animal or a person which creates this sound generally this is not related to the person this is related to the natural things maybe uh, leaves rustling sound of leaves clinging of swords humming of bees, mewing of cats, twittering of birds, chattering of birds, chattering of water, roaring of lion, and crows of croc, hisses, hissing of a snake, and uh, uh, like this, there are so many sounds. Now let's see the second uh, definition based on onomatopoeia, the use of a word that the sound of which imitates or suggests its meaning. The use of a word means when we use a word, and uh, 
Its sound imitates means copies or tries to suggest the meaning of the thing or an animal or a whatever uh, that creates the sound. Means suppose if I use mu that uh, that let us know about the cat. If we use tweeters, it uh, make us know about a bird. If we say nay, it uh, indicates us a horse. And in the same way, the word roaring uh, gives a meaning of lion in my in my mind or anybody's mind. It means there is onomatopoeia. The spelling of this uh, figure of a speech or poetic device is very important to learn onomatopoeia. It's not poeia, it's onomatopoeia. The use of word, okay. In the next uh, definition, you can learn this definition. Uh, it is very important and easy. And I would like to prefer and I would like to suggest and uh, uh, let you know that this definition must be learned if you are going to attempt the subjective question of a uh, uh, subjective question based on writing a definition of onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is a figure of a speech is the figure of a speech in which the sound suggests its meaning. Onomatopoeia is the figure of a speech in which the sound suggests its meaning uh, means uh, the meaning of a sound suggests where it is from means chattering is a related word to water in the same way we find in this example I chatter chatter as I flow to join the brimming river I chatter chatter as I flow uh, you see this line uh, these lines have been taken from the poem uh, from the poem the brook and uh, we see chattering sound is uh, related to water or birds but here it is uh, related to water so uh, the word that represents sound chatter is used here that's why in this uh, example onomatopoeia figure of speech or poetic device is used here other than this personification is also used here because uh, uh, the brook is uh, talking as a living being uh, his uh, the, this uh, brook is uh, um, uh, responding just like a human being or a, a living being so here personification uh, poetic device is also used in this example but patience to prevent that murmur soon replies uh, this line has been taken from john milton's poem sonnet uh, on his blindness here patience is personified and he is replying and patience is replying that's why we can say a personification figure of his speech is also used here and you know what does also mean also means means one more uh, par, uh, figure of his speech or poetic device is used in this example and that is murmur murmur soon replies murmur means uh, at, uh, some type of sound that shows uh, not clear words or is speaking something uh, in whisper then murmur represents onomatopoeia you can use this, uh, these examples in both the figures of a speech, maybe in personification and uh, on mat peer. Let's see example number three. And beauty born of murmuring sound shall pass into her face. This line has been taken from uh, the poem Lucy Gray that was composed by William Wordsworth, the poet of nature. Uh, murmuring sound. Murmuring sound means uh, the sound of nature represents here the word murmuring. Now that's why because of murmuring we can say onomatopoeia figure of a speech or poetic device is used in this example let's see example number four queen of doves is very pleasing queen is a particular sound of doves and this sound represents doves that's why onomatopoeia is a poetic device used here swords clanged means the sound of swords clanged is used here and the guns boomed means uh, the explosion of the guns uh, is represented as bloom uh, sorry boom and boomed so there are two words based on sounds clang and boom that's why we can say onomatopoeia is used in this example beautifully now students i hope that you have gone through this lecture very well and you have tried to learn each and everything from this lecture properly and please keep on watching oracy classes of english language because you are going to watch and understand rest of the poetic devices and they are at uh, they are uh, more than 22 though uh, they are more than 22 
yet i'll try to make uh, many lectures based on these poetic devices and i think this will be very useful for you or on your higher level so to keep on watching oracy classes please you subscribe this channel oracy classes of english language and if you like our lectures please don't forget to like and share our channel and you can write to us in your comment box if you require some other lectures and you want uh, some new videos on your favorite topics i'll try to prepare them so thanks for being with us and thanks for watching oracy classes of english language Thanks a lot.